You could pay almost $40 for this, or you could make it for less than half the price, plus the satisfaction of doing it yourself. Want to learn how? Keep watching. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Katie Failinger and we dive into all sorts of do-it-yourself projects and ideas, everything from woodworking to home decor. I've designed and created my own projects for years and now I wanna share them with you. So if you are into that, I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button. Okay, today we are making the most whimsical touch of decor, a throw pillow with the customized message, I read past my bedtime. Now I was inspired to make this from a Pinterest board, so it's not unique, but check this out. Grandin Road sells a version for $49. Society6 sells one for $39. So you're generally looking at shelling out anywhere from $20 to $40 for something like this before shipping costs and taxes. Uh, no thanks. Minus the cost of the cutting machine I used and basic tools, this pillow cost me $12 to make. So some of you may remember me mentioning in my previous videos, because I talk about it all the time, that I am redoing my front room into a reading room. And I actually I have a whole playlist of different projects I'm working on for that room. I will link that in the description below. And where are all my bookworms? If you get nerdy about reading, let me know in the comments and just write the word bookworm. I know I can't be alone here. Anyway, I had made this as an accent to the armchair that I put in that room and I loved it so much that I decided to make another one and give it as a gift. This would be a perfect present for the book nerd in your life. So let's get into how to do it. And if you watch till the end, I'm gonna hook you up with an instruction sheet that you can download to make this project yourself. So let's first gather our materials. I only need a few things. Most obviously a pillowcase. This is the girly cover from Ikea. A pillow insert, also from Ikea. They're both 20 by 20 inches. I'll need a water-based acrylic paint. I'm using white. A sponge brush, this one is one inch width. Plastic or paper plate. A sheet or two of paper or thin cardboard. And a vinyl stencil. And a heads up, I have a link to a list of all these materials and some similar dupes in the description so that you can easily find what I used. Now, I created this stencil using my Cricut Maker machine, and here's a peek at that process. I do go much deeper into this in other videos, which I will link below, but this video is going to focus more on the technique of creating your own throw pillow using an already finished stencil. And you can find these pre-made vinyl stencils in a ton of Etsy shops at a very reasonable price. But at the same time, I do know that a lot of people get these cutting machines like a Cricut or a Silhouette, and then these machines end up collecting dust in a closet because people don't even know where to start with them. So let me know in the comments below if you have any specific questions about using your Cricut. It can really be a very intimidating piece of machinery. Okay, we will need a few tools with our stencil. First up, a weeder. You could alternately use a toothpick or a fork or a pair of tweezers, just something that's gonna help you peel off the vinyl. You'll need some transfer tape. You could also use painter's tape or masking tape as an alternative to this. Now, first thing, we're gonna prep the stencil. So using your weeding tool, you'll just peel out the letters of the phrase, I read past my bedtime, to expose the design. So you really just need an outline left behind of your design. Next, you're gonna tape some transfer tape over the exposed stenciling. So just trim off what you need, peel off the back and stick it on like a sticker to cover the entire design. Then you're going to remove the backing off of your vinyl. So you're gonna to wanna to peel this back slowly. Next, I'll place the whole thing on the pillowcase, centering it, of course, and then pressing it down firmly like a giant sticker and using my hands just to smooth out any bumps or bubbles. Then I'll peel off the transfer tape or the masking tape or the painter's tape, whatever you used, and reveal the stencil. Now, in the interest of transparency, I want to be honest with you guys, I am not loving this brand of vinyl on fabric. This is Style Tech Vinyl, that's the brand name. I have used it on other projects. I can't say that I loved it then, but it was okay to work with on wood. So if I was to do it all over again, I'd probably switch out brands for something with better adhesion. I actually really like the Cricut brand, non-permanent vinyl, and I've also used Oracal Vinyl, which I thought worked really well. But you see how this is pulling up from the fabric? That's what I'm not loving about this particular brand of vinyl on fabric. It's just not sticking well enough. So it's making the process really difficult 
difficult. So I'm actually going to trim away little slivers of the transfer tape as I go because I keep finding that if I'm trying to pull off the entire piece of transfer tape, it just pulls too much of the vinyl off and I don't really get anywhere. Then it ends up sticking back on itself and it's just really, really difficult. So this whole piece of transfer tape just isn't gonna pull off in one piece and keep my design intact at the same time. Okay, so I finally got that off and now I'm going to grab the paper that I had set aside and just place a sheet or two inside the pillowcase underneath the fabric on which I'll be painting. This way my paint won't leak through to the other side. I'm going to shake up my paint and then squeeze out a decent sized dollop onto my plate. I'll grab my sponge brush and start dabbing or stippling the paint onto the pillowcase. So since we're using fabric, the last thing I want is to sweep the paint on in large strokes because I might accidentally get paint under the stencil and that would obviously ruin my design. On top of it all, this vinyl again isn't the best, so I'm gonna be extra careful and just dab this on gently. Now, if you're using a better grade adhesive vinyl, you can do some light modest strokes just to fill in any gaps, but much more than that could mess up your design. And as far as technique, since the pillowcase is a very dark shade, the paint should give a pretty stark contrast with even just one coat. And I actually really like the sort of distressed look that that gives me. And once it's dry about 80% of the way, I'll very carefully peel off the stencil and voila. So I got carried away, I was playing around with different fonts and I made a bunch of these with different phrases. Just one more chapter, love this one. Once upon a time, this would look so cute in a kid's room and they lived happily ever after. You know, this would be a really good wedding gift. And you know, I might actually just throw these up on eBay because I made them purely for the joy of it. I don't actually have a way to use them in my home right now. Because even though one of the prettiest ways to add a pop of color is with pillows, you can always have too much of a good thing. But I was having such a blast coming up with different ideas of what I could stencil on these to customize them. And it adds this really cool extra pop of culture too, don't you think? I know I took it to an unnecessary level. So do you think you'll give this project a try or maybe know someone who might? Feel free to share this video with the crafter in your life. And don't forget to grab the directions for this project. I hope you'll give it a try. The link is in the description. And if you liked this tutorial, give this video a thumbs up and hit subscribe. I post videos every Thursday and you can also ring that little bell to get notified when those new videos go live. But if you wanna stay in touch in between videos, I posted below all the different places that you can find me in the meantime. Guys, thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you next time. Everything from woodwork, from wood, 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 mm, three, two. I was playing around with different front fronts <laughs> and similar loops, similar, similar dupes. Blah. Why did I wear a blue top? I totally blend in with this thing. And a heads up, I have a link of a lit, a link of, and don't forget to grab, oh, I gotta go get my kid from preschool. This would be a perfect gift for the Burkner Burk. Burk, Burk. <laughs>